Hello and welcome to Wombat Coaching. Are you still confused about book titles, subtitles, descriptions, keywords and the like? If so, I'm going to show you how to do this in simple terms. If you stick around, I have some good tips for you at the end. Let's get started. Okay, so when we upload a new paperback on Kindle Direct Publishing, we have the book title and subtitle. And many people are having problems with this. On a number of the Facebook groups, you hear stories of people having their books rejected or sent back for rework, and they don't seem to understand what the problem is. It doesn't help when Amazon sends you an email that is not that clear, but if you read between the lines, generally it's to do with what's in your title or subtitle. Many people get it wrong. They either repeat words or they try and stack their subtitles with keywords and this can cause problems and have your books rejected. If you continue down this path, you can end up having your account suspended or closed. So when we go to Kindle Direct Publishing Help, there's lots of information here on how to best set up your titles and subtitles. And the title best practices include entering your title exactly as it reads on the cover of your book. So if you're entering more than what your book is actually titled, then that will be rejected. Your book title should reflect what your book is, is about. If you are also, doing an ebook or a hardcover, you need to ensure that the cover is the same across all three. And it clearly gives you a list of prohibited items that you should not include in the field. And that includes HTML tags, repeating generic words like notebook, journal, gifts, etc. You see so many books on Amazon that have got through where they repeat, where they stack the title with unnecessary words that aren't necessarily in the title. Same applies with your subtitles. Your subtitle should be further description of what your book is about. It's not a place to stack your book with keywords. What you need to remember is, well, once you have your title and subtitle in place, it cannot be changed or edited at a later stage. You would have to delete the book and republish the book if you wanted to change your title or subtitle. Now the next section we have is authors and contributors. Now you don't have to use your real name, you can use a pen name or you can use a business or brand name here. And many people decide not to use their own name as, as they would rather use another name. This is a good place to set up your author name that you can use on Author Central to showcase all the books that you have under that name. And there's nothing wrong with using a business name like, um, like Kangaroo Stew Publishing, for example. It's a good way to set up a brand name that you can use across your entire range of books. You might decide you have a different type of book, in which case you could use a different name. You don't have to use the same name every time. Once you have given your book an author name or pen name, that cannot be changed when the book is published. We now move down to your book description. Once again, you can use some keywords in your description, but it's best to describe your book to the reader. This is all about the person or persons who are likely to buy your book. So it's best to give as true a description of your book as you possibly can. As it states here by Amazon, keep it simple, compelling and professional. The description field allows you to format your text and put some of the text in bold, use dot points or numbering to make your description stand out. Once again, you cannot put HTML tags in here. You can't put reference to a website or email address and you can't tell potential buyers to review your book. If you try any of these things, then your book will be rejected and you may have your account suspended or closed. KDP give clear guidelines as to what's accepted 
in your description field of your book. The next section is publishing rights. I have touched on this previously in relation to using certain content and in relation to whether you have publishing rights. I suggest you watch that video if you need more information. We have seven fields for entering keywords. Now once again it's quite clear what you should be entering here. You should not be entering keywords that are not relevant to your book and you should not be repeating words that have already been used in the title, subtitle and description. This is your opportunity to list keywords that you believe people will search for to find your book. Now there are a number of different ways people list keywords here. Some like to use phrases and some like to use individual words. There's no hard and fast rule. In fact, Amazon in their help guide indicate that you can use phrases or singular words. On their help guide, Amazon states that keywords can be a word or a phrase. For best results, we recommend using phrases that are two to three words long. To determine the right search keywords for your book, we suggest you think like a reader. What topics or genres are your readers searching for? So it's quite clear there what Amazon wants you to put in those seven fields. Keywords that are relevant to your book that you believe readers will be searching for. Not unnecessary words just for the sake of stacking your keywords in order to try and buck the system. You need to give quality keywords that the reader would be looking for for your type of book. Amazon provides also a list of keywords to avoid and it lists quite a few keywords here that I've seen as recommended in other training. Now, if Amazon have it here, it's quite clear that you shouldn't use these types of keywords. Things like 80 gigabytes and then written differently is 80 space GB or computer and then computers again with an S on the end, a plural. But it does say that obviously words that can be misspelled can be repeated, but not words that are quite common. Like you wouldn't put book and books in. It is quite obvious that the reader is searching for a book. It also states that you should not put quotations mark around phrases, as this will limit the search to that particular phrase. The example given here is, in inverted commas, complex, suspenseful, who done it. This would mean that that exact phrase would need to be searched in order to find the book. For better results, it suggests to use complex, suspenseful, who done it without the inverted commas. And there's nothing wrong with entering keywords which is similar to the niche you are using, words of a similar meaning. They go on to state that you shouldn't be using any reference to Amazon or KDP as part of your keywords that you enter here. We next have our category section, and that is fairly straightforward. However, it does seem to cause problems with some people as they don't understand what categories they need to apply to their books. You can generally choose appropriate categories from this page. If you are having difficulties finding an appropriate category, then look up a similar book on Amazon and see what categories are being used for that book and try and find categories that are similar to that category. Once again, Amazon warn you not to use categories that are not related to your book type. This only causes confusion and poor customer experience. Now remember to click on low content book if your book is a low content book. Once again, there has been some confusion in relation to what low content books are. Low content books are books that are repetitive in nature, like line journals, diaries, where the same pages are repeated throughout the book. Colouring books, adult colouring books, activity books are not low content books and they are classed as medium to high depending on the nature of the book. Amazon doesn't really differentiate between medium and high content books, but it does determine what a low content book is. So make sure you tick the low content book box if your book is going to be a low content book. When you are taken to the next page, 
you will not be given the opportunity to have a free ISBN. ISBNs are not required for low content books. Now, the very last section does this book contain language, situations, or images inappropriate to children under 18 years of age? Generally, that would be no, but if you are publishing books that does have any adult content, you need to select yes in this instance. So I'm now going to take you to my first bonus, which is showing you how ChatGPT can be used to create a book description. So you'll need to log into a ChatGPT account, and once you've done so, you can type in a request like this. And there we have a description that's been generated by ChatGPT. Now it's not going to be perfect, but it'll give you an idea of what you can use in your description. Now you could take all of this and cut it and paste it into your description and then edit it to how you'd like it to look. It gives you quite an extensive number of paragraphs that aren't too bad that can be used in your description. You can modify what comes back, take out what's not appropriate to your description. It does give you some assistance in creating your book description. Now, it's just a matter of, if you're not happy with what's there, it's just a matter of typing in further information and seeing what comes back. And you'd be surprised, some of the descriptions provided by ChatGPT are quite good and can be quite enticing to the reader. You can also ask ChatGPT to provide you with keywords if you are stuck at any time. Let's try that now. It's just a matter of telling ChatGPT what you'd like and it will give you a list of possible keywords that you could also use in your book. Now it's just a matter of checking these keywords with Amazon to see how they would rate and using the ones that you feel might be appropriate and might be of some assistance if you were stuck. It's a great way of getting additional keywords that you may not have thought of that may assist you in compiling your keywords in the seven fields. Okay, so this brings me now to bonus tip number two. Now, when you were searching Amazon for keywords, it suggested that you compile a list of keywords and insert them into an Excel spreadsheet where you can examine them and rate them in relation to the Amazon search volume. Now, this can be a tedious task, especially if you have to type out all the keywords that are here. I'm going to show you how you can grab all these keywords and convert them quickly into text for pasting directly into your spreadsheet. Keywords, we'll just grab these ones for now and we'll head over to Microsoft OneNote. Now, this has to be the desktop version. doesn't work with the web version. We paste that list into OneNote desktop version. Now, if I now right click on that image, you'll see I have the ability to copy text from picture. Now, I don't know any other software that does this. I'm sure there are others, but this is the one that I'm familiar with. We can now copy that text by just clicking on that. Go over to our spreadsheet that we've set up for our keywords and we can now right click and paste those keywords straight into our spreadsheet. Now that saved us a lot of time because otherwise we would, would need to type all those keywords individually. 
So all we have to do now is search each one and list the Amazon search volume uh, as part of our research for our keywords. By the way, I was using the AMZ Suggestion Expander plugin to get these additional keywords, and you can download a free version of this plugin for your browser. It'll work on both Chrome and Edge browser. There are, of course, other tools you can use to research your keywords, and I'll be telling you more about this in another video. Keep an eye out for Publisher Rocket. I do have the link below, and I also have the link of the other software that I've talked about during this video. I'll also provide you with links to the Amazon help sections that I referred to during this video. I hope this video was helpful. Please like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.